So hello everyone. Uh, just the next workshop is going to be Istio Service Mesh Getting Started Workshop by uh, Lin Soon. Thank you so much for joining and um, take it away. Okay, thank you. Hey everyone, um, I am going to, sorry, I click on the wrong button, I apologize. Meant to hit on the present button. Um, okay, so, um, so first I want to introduce myself. Thank you for coming to my workshop. I am the director of open source with uh, Solo. I've been working in Istio for actually four plus years now. I wrote a book to help user quickly get started with Istio. Now I'm also providing workshop uh, using similar contents from my book, but it's a little bit more updated contents. So just real quickly, um, you might be wondering, you know, what is Solo, right? Why is Solo, you know, doing a Istio workshop? So Solo provides the whole Glue API infrastructure. Fundamentally, we are solving the challenging of service connectivity. It's an application networking company where we connect your services at the edge or inside of the service mesh. Uh, we have developer portal building on top of Istio. We have WebAssembly Hub, uh, allow users to extend Envoy as needed. Uh, Glue Mesh is the mesh product we provide to help users simplify Istio. And we are hiring. So actually a lot of roles uh, we have provided by our company. So if you're looking for jobs, um, check it out. So, what I'm offering today as a workshop, um, because it's only an intro. hour. Uh, yeah. I don't think we can see the slides on the okay. presentation. Okay, so if you have trouble to see the slides, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to see it this way, because I think you can see most of the slides without like maximize. Would that work? Uh, yeah, I think that would okay. too. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, but sometimes I've I've hit it on some of the conference tours. Not always. Um, so what we are covering today is a issue workshop. Um, it's a shortened version because I normally run this workshop for two hour and thirty minutes, but given the time limited we have, so we're going to run a shortened version of this workshop just to put in the 60 minutes uh, time frame we have here, but it's part of our badge we offer. So if you're interested in learning more about this workshop and get the badge, you can always register to a workshop at solo.io. We offer these type of workshop on a monthly basis. So let's talk about Istio common adoption pattern because those are the things we're gonna cover in the lab. And due to the limited time we have at the lab, we were not going to be able to do every single lab. So if you are already know a little bit about Istio, I'm going to let you pick which lab you are going to do because, you know, I want you to do what's benefit you the most, right? So if you know how to install Istio, I want you to skip that installation um, lab so you can jump to the legs and know what platform does provide you those capabilities. So we're going to talk about how to expose your services to Istio Ingress Gateway and how to do that securely. So that's the second lab. The third lab, we're going to talk about how do you observe the services within the service mesh? How do you do um, get the Istio dashboard running with uh, Kayali, which is a project sponsored by Red Hat pr pr primarily. And also how do you view distribute tracing with your microservices? How do you view the Istio mesh um, Grafana dashboard? So we're going to talk all that and it's in relate to observability. The fourth lab we're going to talk about is how do you incrementally adapt mutual TS for your mesh. The fifth one is how do you control your traffic? What if you have multiple versions of a particular service? How do you dock launch the service? How do you gradually shift the traffic to the newer version of the services? How do you add resilience um, 
to your services. So that is all the lab. Uh, let me talk about the lab environment in the meanwhile. Um, actually, before I talk about lab environment, let me send you guys a link. So what I have right now, we're using this platform provided by Instruct. So what I'm going to do is create this link to our chat. So you're going to see this uh, now. So go ahead, uh, visit that URL. Um, it's going to ask you to log in, which you can log in with either your GitHub ID or your Google ID. I think they also support Twitter or Facebook. I can't remember exactly. So I would assume if you're in the United States, you probably have uh, one of those IDs. So go ahead, just log in, and then you should be able to um, launch a window like what I'm showing now, uh, which I am going to close this out. So you should be able to see this uh, workshop, like what I'm seeing now. So that invite I just provided would allow you to access to this. So we have uh, five tracks. Uh, the last one is the bonus, which you probably don't have time. Um, but I'm going to let you pick which one you are going to do because um, because of the timing we have, uh, like I mentioned, this is normally two hours, 30 minutes. Um, if you already know how to install the way you to do it, it just skip to Istio Ingress Gateway. Uh, so for me, uh, because the install is straightforward, I'm just going to skip to Istio Ingress Gateway. And because of the time we have, I'm going to try to teach you guys um, lab two, lab three, and lab four. And then if you guys have time after the session today, you can feel free to continue the lab on your own pace. Uh, the, I think the link is valid for a few more hours for today. Any questions? So um, once you decide which challenge you are going with, uh, you can click on skip to, uh, like what I'm doing now. So now it's going to prep you for the environment. As you can see, you know, it's going to take like two minutes to get my environment up running. So what essentially, so go ahead, click on that button uh, for whichever lab you want to. If you don't have an idea, just uh, skip right to the second lab, uh, which is just follow what I'm doing. Um, so let's talk about the environment. So the environment of what you are deploying right now is essentially provisioning a Kubernetes cluster in either of the three clouds. Um, it's going to try to provision one closer to you. And, uh, you know, we're going to install Istio for you in the lab one. Either you do it or if you skip to lab two, Istio would automatically install for you. And, uh, you know, the the environment provider terminal and uh, you know it connects you automatically to the kubernetes cluster where you can run kubectl commands so that's essentially the environment the first lab is just install istio so it's nothing interesting the second lab which we're showing is uh we're going to have services uh exposed on the egress ingress gateway we're not going to do anything related to egress gateway. So we're going to uh, touch on Istio network resources, uh, gateway, and virtual services. So gateway is really the edge load balancer configuration, and virtual services are a list of the routing rules. So this is essentially what we will do in the lab two, which is we're going to deploy three services if they haven't been deployed, and then we're going to wire up the the services uh, web API and expose it on the Istio ingress gateway, and we're going to do that securely. So um, my environment is still coming up. Uh, let me know if you have any questions uh, in the chat. So while we're waiting for the environments, uh, since that's going to take a little while, um, I'm going to go through with you uh, on the on the the next lab. Let me double check the environment. Yeah. 
So the next lab we're going to talk about is mesh observability. So what we're going to do is incrementally add services to the mesh. And then you're going to see that you automatically gain the visibilities um, of how the services interact with each other um, by just simply by adding the services to the mesh. So this is the powerful thing provided by service mesh through Envoy proxy. Uh, we're going to talk about deploy paths and services to the mesh. So a key, a few important thing here is making sure that you name the service port for each of the service port that you want Envoy to capture. Uh, the pod must have a service associated with um, with it. Uh, you want we want you to enable deployments with app and version. The reason is so that our telemetry um, observability system can pick it up. Um, we don't want to use UID one three three seven. It's mainly because of the Envoy proxy are using it. And uh, we want you to check, do you have net admin and natural privilege? Because if you don't, we recommend you to look at Istio CNI, which is intended to solve this problem. So in the lab three, uh, we're going to reuse the same three services and we're going to add a sidecar proxy to each of them. And uh, um, you know, and uh, enjoy the observability data. Now, if I go back, oh, as you can see, um, how many of you get the environments up running? So let me do a poll here because um, no poll yet. Let me see if I can create a poll, ask a question. Actually, I don't think I can create a poll. I don't have permission. Yeah, I can create it for you. Can you create one just, just just so i have an idea how uh you know where people are just the, um what do you want to ask just if the environment is ready to go yeah how many of you uh yeah is your environment up and running okay so uh, if your environment is up running you can go ahead and follow along with me if your environment are not running just watch me, and then when your environment is running, then you can go ahead and do it. So what we're going to do next is click on the stop button, right? So that's the guiding way to to you. And uh, can you guys see my screen okay with the right font? Okay. Uh, you can see your screen with the uh, terminal and the So text here. size is okay. I don't need to do you change anything. Uh, yeah, I think it's fine. Perfect. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is, you know, check which directory we are in. So we're going to CD to this uh, basic directory, is your basic, which is our lab. Um, then we're going to deploy the sample application. We talk about web API recommendation and purchase history. Um, by the way, these samples are building using uh, console's uh, fake service from Nick Jackson. Um, so what we're going to do first is create the namespace called Istio in action. And then we're going to deploy the sample um, application to that namespace. So as you can see, we deployed a web API recommendation, purchase history version one, and sleep. Notice we're not injecting any sidecar, so this is nothing related to Istio. This is just plain Kubernetes. Okay, all my pods are running. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to, you know, remember we are going to wire up the web API to the Istio ingress gateway. So we're going to get um, the service IP, gateway IP for, um, for the Istio ingress gateway. And, uh, you know, we're going to export the port and the secure port. So you can see the gateway IP is here, which we captured. Now, what we're gonna do is expose our application. So let's review what you need to do to expose the application. The first resource we're gonna review is the gateway resource. Uh, this is a Istio resource, as you can tell here, uh, istio.io in the networking uh, namespace. 
and uh, it's a kind gateway. Um, the important thing here is the name of the gateway, the selector of which deployment this gateway resource is for. So the selector selects that this is the Istio Ingress gateway early on, and which port are you expose your service, which we start with 80, which is not secure at the moment, but we want to start there. And then what are the host name you are going to expose um, on that gateway? Let's review our virtual service configuration. As you can see, the virtual service, the, the right way to think about it, it's like a route rule, right? So essentially you, you tell um, Istio, you know, when it's for this uh, web API gateway, I just created, if it's this host, Istio in action.io, go ahead, route the traffic to uh, the web API in the Istio in action namespace. And by the way, you routed to port 8080, even though the port on the gateway was 80. So that's essentially what that means. Um, what we're going to do next is, uh, you know, just to understand why is 8080 here, right? So if you review the web API in the Istio in action namespace, you can see that service is running on 8080, which is why. So um, we're going to apply these two uh, virtual service and gateway res uh, resources we just reviewed together. Um, so we're going to apply that resource to Kubernetes and the Istio control plane essentially, you know, listens to these resources from Kubernetes and then propagates these resources uh, to Envoy sidecar, to the language Envoy can understand. Now, if we curl our uh, Istio um, gateway IP and host uh, the ingress port, which is 80 here, you're going to see a hello message back from the Web API service. You can also drill into um, a little bit more about you know, the route configuration. As you can see, this is exactly the route we just configured on the Istio Ingress Gateway. Um, if you want to see individual routes, you can do that too. Uh, for instance, uh, this uh, HTTP.80 that route we created, you can see this route would route to the Web API. Um, port 80 in the Istio in action namespace, it says, you know, there are retries, you know, and number of retries too. And we're going to retry on um, 503, you know, if uh, any of these are error conditions, we're going to do retry for you. So these are the detailed route configuration. It's still automatically translate for you based on the gateway resource and, uh, the, uh, and the virtual service resource we just deployed. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is, I mean, this is a plain traffic, right? We're going to need to figure out how do we secure that traffic, right? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a TLS secret in the Istio in action. Um, I'm sorry, I call the Istio in action.io in the Istio system namespace. So the reason we want to create this is we want to make sure the gateway resource can use it. So let's review this uh, configuration. So this is an updated version of the same Web API gateway resource. In this one, we actually delete port 80 and uh, you know we replace this with 443 because we don't want to allow HTTP access. We only want to allow the secure access. And hostname is the same. Uh, we did update the protocol and uh, the name of the protocol. And one thing important here is we use the credential name, which we just created um, a minute ago. Now, uh, let's go ahead and apply this updated um, gateway resource. As you can see, this is like your deploy, a new updated of your deployment or service with Kubernetes. It's just basic Kubernetes commands. Um, so now if this uh, updated gateway resource is applied, now if you curl the Istio Ingress gateway on the secure port, which is 443 here, 
uh, we do expect, you know, you're getting a hello back from the web API. So now the question I have for you is, what if we run this command that we run five minutes ago? If we visit the, um, the web API through Istio Ingress Gateway on the HTTP, do you think it's going to succeed? Yet yeah, the answer is no, it's not going to succeed because we is specifically configured Istio, we only allow port on the secure port. So that's it, guys. Uh, this is uh, this lab teaches you how do you secure your services with Istio Ingress Gateway. Um, that how do you expose your services on the Istio Ingress Gateway? So uh, your user outside of the cluster can reach your services, and how do you secure that um, connection? So you can run the check command, which tells you, you know, whether your lab is successful. If you did all the challenging, we have automated scripts to help you. And then we're going to set up the challenging for the next lab. So I'm going to wait here for a minute, just making sure you guys uh, catch up with everything I did. If you have any questions, do let me know in the chat. Okay, I saw three people said they have instructor uh, running and zero people said not running. So that means that probably most people have it running. Thanks for the poll. All right, um, so we're going to go move on to the next challenging. Uh, as I mentioned to you, this is an observability challenging to allow us to gradually add services to the mesh and uh, you know observe the benefits of the metrics, the tracing provided by Istio. So in order to add something to the mesh, we recommend you to use the automatic sidecar injection. You could use manual, but automatic has much better integration with Helm if you're a Helm shop. And the automatic sidecar injection is also very mature, so there's no reason not to use it. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, label the namespace Istio in action with uh, Istio injection enable. So that essentially tell Istio for anything deployed in this Istio in action namespace, I want to have the sidecar automatically injected. Uh, you can query the namespace to see um, we do have this uh, Istio in in action enabled for injection. The next thing we're going to do is review the service requirements for onboarding a services to Istio. So what we're going to do is uh, review the Web API service. As you can see, um, the Web API service has, um, uh, we did name the port uh, for HTTP. It's on port 8082 with the target port 8081. So in Istio, uh, we recommend you to name the port. This is extremely important because it allows you tell Istio, you know, this traffic is HTTP, so Istio doesn't have to spend uh, CPU or memory to guessing what it would be, and it could be guessed wrong. So we do have automatic protocol detection, but it's going to use more um, CPU and memory, and then we could get it wrong too sometimes. So explicitly declare your protocol is highly recommended. Now from the deployment descriptor here, um, you can see you know, we have a label on the app and version. So this is also highly recommended. The reason is in order for us to be able to associate a telemetry data, with a particular app and version, this is how we can tell and filter that data and bring that data back to you. 
And as you can see, the container port is 8081, which is why the target port is mapped to 8081 there. So um, you can, you're welcome to check the other services, but for the purpose of the time, we're gonna move on. And uh, now that you know how to check and what to check. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, roll out, um, restart deployment of Web API. And the reason is when, the moment we restart, it's going to you know, recover with the new pod with the sidecar uh, injected because we ask everything in the namespace to have automatic sidecar injected. So now um, we're going to query this um, pod. As you can see, two slash two, that means the sidecar is injected to it. Um, so everything is up running uh, and looking good. Now, if you uh, you can also validate in the pod, uh, just making sure you know your pod logs continue looks good after the sidecar is injected. In this case, it does. Um, now, the other thing it's also important is uh, okay, you added one service in the mesh, the other two services are not in the mesh. Is, is it impacting any of your production traffic, right? Is your web API continue working? And it looks like it does continue working and it does uh, able to call recommendations and purchase history. So in this case, uh, you can continue to test this as you add in services to the mesh. So let's take a look at uh, you know what happens in this case. If you go to... Um, Get pod and the do a dash o yaml. You can actually find a lot detail information in this case. Uh, the first thing I want to highlight is uh, there is a initialization container, which is the init container here. And the purpose of that init container is to set up the IP table rules for your pod. So. Envoy sidecar is smart to capture all the incoming traffic and also smart to capture all the outgoing traffic. Um, so if you're interested in learning, like what are these parameter means, dash u, dash m, which I can never remember, um, but this is an easy way for you to, you know, get understanding of uh, each of these commands. Um, the Istio proxy container, which is the other container. So we reviewed the initialization container, by which, by the way, it would dies right after uh, it, it finished the initialization. The Istio proxy container, uh, you can see it uses proxy v2 Istio 110, which is the image I have right now. You can see it, we specify, you know, what are the CPU and memory. You know, so this is extremely useful for capacity planning. Um, and uh, you can also see like Istio CA cert and uh, Istio token are mounted to the pod. So Istio DCA cert, uh, there's like, um, there's also a Istio token that's uh, mounted here. So, um, a lot of information amounted to the pod just to making sure the proxy be able to, you know, get the token and be able to securely talk to the control plane to establish the connection and finish up the, uh, the identity of the proxy to be able to get the key and the search signed. So all these magic are happening in the Israel proxy. So, um, the next thing we're going to do, since everything going well, is we're going to roll start um, the deployment of, of or the rest of the deployment in the Istio in action namespace. And now, if we do a pods uh, get pods command, as you can see, you know all the new one that's been bring up all have the Istio proxy sidecar injected. Now, if we continue curl our application on HTTPS, you can see the application still running, right? So there's not really much impact other than now we have the sidecar. We do have to plan for capacity planning, make sure you know we have enough resources to run the sidecar. 
Now, uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to generate some loads. Uh, so what I'm going to do is put a loop of 100 and uh, you know we sleep every three seconds but we're going to continuously hit on our web API, web api service um and now if you go to terminal two which is right here um i want you to click on this uh dashboard kayali command so bring that this would allow you to do a like a proxy uh port forward right so that the Kayali UI can actually show you the Kayali UI. So um, let's click on the namespace drop down. Uh, we want you, let's see, you. okay, navigate to the Kayali UI and select a graph from the UI and then select the Istio in action from the namespace. Now you can see, you know, I have my graph available now. So you can actually see how am I calling, uh, how am I calling uh, the sequence of my service, right? From issue ingress gateway to web API, to recommendation and to purchase history and click on any of these, you can get a little bit more stats on this connection, right? The request time, you know, what are the error code? So all that information is automatically available for you without you actually needing to do anything other than, you know, just have your site injected. By the way, I don't understand why Kayali didn't enable these by default, but I always enable them. So the traffic animation and security, so if you turn on, you can see the traffic actually constantly flow to the system. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is distribute tracing. Um, so that you can see another benefit that you will observe when just adding sidecar to your services. So if you go back to terminal two, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to control C out of here and I'm going to call istiocado dashboard Jega, which is our distributes uh, tracing system. By the way, that's another uh, Red Hat led project um so now if you go to the jega ui you will actually see um be able to select services like i can see uh is your ingress gateway and i can see you know i want to see all the traces related to is your ingress gateway like for instance this one you know it has like six trade spans so i can click on each of them and look at the flow and I can look at well, it, you know, each services are spending time. So these type of graphics, uh, trace span information are extremely useful when you need to understand where the time are spent. And also if you need to debugging any error message, you know, it has all that data available for you. The next thing we want to show you is Istio Grafana dashboard. So what we're going to also do is exit out here and do Istio Cuddle uh, dashboard Grafana and uh, you know hit enter here. So now if you go back to the Grafana UI, you will be able to start to see some of the Istio data. So Sorry, I click on the link accidentally. Um, so the first thing we're, we're going to do is uh, navigate to the graph, uh, Grafana UI. On the left the menu, select dashboards. The icon has four squares. And uh, then click on the manage uh, menu. And if you click on Istio, you will see a bunch of data, right? So let's see, uh, we want to see Istio uh service dashboard so this is service dashboard and uh, you can see you know all the client and server requests the duration you know successful rate so all that data is available for you without you needing to actually do anything so it's very powerful um, you, uh, if you actually click on it, so feel free to play around with this. 
because um, not only just like the uh, service dashboard, there's also a performance dashboard available where you can see like CPU memory um, by different Istio components, by proxy, by the Istio control plane. So all these data are available for you. Congratulations, that's it for this lab. Um, I'm going to click on the check button uh, just to check uh, if I'm running the lab successfully. Essentially in this lab, we teach you, you know, how do you add services to Istio through automatic sidecar injection? And what are the benefits Istio gives you, right? To allow you to observe what's going on within each of your services. Um, any questions? Okay, I'm going to wait uh, for two to three minutes just to allow you guys to catch up. But do let me know if you already finished, uh, you like me to move forward. Okay, we're gonna continue um, on to the next lab. So the next lab we're going to talk about is how do you secure services in your mesh? Um, typically, we recommend you to incrementally add services. I'm sorry, that's the wrong one. Uh, how do you enable mutual TLS uh, among your services, right? So we're going to spend a little bit of time to understand how workload keys and certificates are distributed in Istio. How do you inspect key and certificates for each service? And really understand how Metro TLS is enforced by Istio proxy. So we're going to just um, sit on this topic and do a lab related to this. And we're going to reuse uh, the same example uh, that we have um, from Web API to recommendation to purchase history. So you should be able to get to the screen, which is lab four, if you decided to do lab four. So the first thing we want you to, to do is just make sure you're in this folder, which we are. Um, so you don't have to do anything if you are. So uh, we want you, the way is your uh, configs mutual TLS is through a policy called peer authentication policy. So what we are doing now is just to um, query the issue, the entire Kubernetes cluster to see if there's any peer authentication policy, which we don't have any at the moment. The next thing we're going to do is enable mutual TLS, strict mutual TLS for the entire mesh. And to do it in the entire mesh is by deploy to the Istio system namespace. Uh, Istio does allow you to config uh, where you want to hold uh, the root namespace. And by default, the Istio system is the root namespace where you hold the mesh-wide configurations. So as you can see, my pure authentication policy applied now, if you go to and query, you should be able to see the one I just deployed uh, in the Istio system. And, and uh, let's see how mutual TLS is in action. So uh, to do that, we're going to apply the, the sleep application in the default namespace. The reason is, uh, you may be wondering, you know, you already have sleep in the Istio in action, right? Why are you doing this? The reason is, you know, this sleep application is not gonna have sidecar injected. Well, the other sleep in Istio in action namespace 
is going to have Psyche injected. So that's the difference. So now we're going to call from the sleep um, in the default namespace to the web API in the Istio in action. As you might have guessed, it's not going to work. Why is that? Now, um, if you actually call from the sleep part in the Istio in action namespace to the web API in the Istio in action, you know, everything continue works. So why is that? The reason the sleep pod in the default namespace doesn't work is because we enable mutual TRS for the entire mesh. So what does that mean? So that essentially means uh, for anything access the services in the mesh, which Web API is a service in the mesh, it needs to have a um, mutual TRS connection. And then in order for a service to establish a mutual TRS connection with uh, the Web API service, it needs to have a sidecar proxy because that proxy, remember we talked about that proxy allows you to establish connection with the control plan, allows you to have the right uh, key and certs uh, signed by Istio CA or whatever external CA you might be using so that it allows you to establish the communication through mutual TRS. So essentially the proxy on the sleep pod in this example, in the Istio in action namespace has the right key and certs to upgrade that connection from sleep pod uh, to, from the proxy that sits uh, next to the sleep pod to the web API uh, service. Uh, but the sleep in the default namespace doesn't have the proxy, so it couldn't update the connection. When it sends a plane traffic, web API is going to reject that because that's how we configure Istio um, to reject anything without mutual TLS. So the next thing we're going to do is visualize this mutual TLS enforcement in Kayali. So to do that, we're going to generate some load. Uh, similar as before, we're going to sleep every three seconds. Now, if we go back to Kayali and um, if we bring back the Kayali UI and, uh, you know, get back to the graph view and uh, let's see. Oh, if we see some security badges and the annotation, now you can see uh, it actually has an icon here that says mesh wide mutual TRS is enabled. So that's how, you know, Kayali actually knows it's enabled. You might be wondering, you know, Len, in the last lab, I remember you enabled the security badge. It has the security icon. Also, you are absolutely right. The, the, well, so what's the difference, right? So what's the difference in this lab was the lab prior. So in the lab prior, we didn't enable strict mutual TRS. So a mutual TRS is best effort, which means uh, we still we will try to use mutual TRS if we can. If mutual TRS fail, we're going to continue allow the connection to go through. So that's what permissive means. So it's not a security um, purpose um, thing, but it does allow your traffic continue flow through, which is super helpful as you onboarding your services to the mesh, right? Because as you onboarding, some of your services may have the sidecar, some may not. So that's when permissive becomes really useful. But with the moment you enable strict mutual TRS, that means only the, the traffic that mutual TRS is allowed. So even though you may not see much difference on Kayali dashboard, the security posture is actually different. 
Okay, the next thing we're going to do is, uh, let's see, we're going to understand, try to spend a little bit of time, trying to understand how Metro TRS works in Istio. So to do that, well, we're going to get out of here, uh, one of these terminals, so you can control C to get out. So we're going to do a proxy um, config on the web API. Uh, deployment in Istio in action and look at the secret configuration. So from the output, you can see the default secret and your Istio service mesh root CA public certificate, right? So that's all available for you. Um, now, if you want to check the issue of the public certificate, Let's see how you analyze that. So essentially what you can do is, you know, you can use base 64 decoded and then you can use OpenSSL to uh, grab the issuer. Um, so you can see this issuer is cluster.local. Now it check if your public certificate in the default secret is valid. So you can see it has uh, not before, not after. So I think we're definitely fall into that window because the time is GMT. So it expires actually 24 hours. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is check the identity of the client certificate to see if it's correct. As you can see, uh, it's uh, X509 certificate and the identity is the SPIFI ID format. It uses the, the trust domain the namespace, uh, is still in action namespace and service account and the web API service. So if you are wondering, right, where is cluster.local? Where is the web API service account come from, right? We're gonna dig into that a little bit. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, get the config map of Istio and the graph trust domain, right? So when you install Istio, by default, we use uh, cluster.local as trust domain. You could potentially customize that. Now, if you review um, the web API.yaml uh, that we deployed together, you can see it uses the service account web API. So this is essentially you know, how we construct uh, this um, SPIFI ID. Now, the next question I want you to think through is, how does the Web API service obtain the needed key and certificate, right? So remember early on, you reviewed the injected proxy container, what it looks like. So one thing I want to highlight here is, um, it has, uh, let's see, a Istio token that's mounted. It also have like the root cert mounted, right? So the Istio uh, root cert uh, is mounted from uh, the Istio CA root cert config map. So you can see this config map in the Istio in action namespace. Yeah, so this is the Istio CA root cert right here. So when the Istio, uh, the sidecar proxy and your application pod, so for example, Web API, during the start time of that pod, Istio agent, uh, which we also call it pilot agent, creates the private key for that Web API service. And then it sends the certificate signing request, so which is shortened as CSR to the, uh, send the request uh, to Istio uh, Certificate Authority, which by default is Istio D, to sign the private key. And it uses the Istio token to say, you know, I am the 
the service, the agent for the Web API service, and it also uses. Um, so as you can see, you know, it uses this Web API token uh, it, along with the Istio token here. So that's how you know the the keys and certificates are signed by the the CA. Now you might be wondering, you know, why is this expire after twenty four hours, right? This is actually on purpose for better security. So what happens if the certificate expires after twenty four hours? The Istio agent would monitor the Web API certificate just to check, you know, is it expiring soon? And if it's expiring really soon, it's going to repeat the certificate signing request that I just walked you through so that making sure that it can, you know, sign the certificate, make sure it's continue to be valid for the next 40, 24 hours. Now, the next thing we want to talk about is how is mutual TR strict enforced, right? So um, if you look at the uh, Envoy configuration for deploy uh, web API, it's actually a lot of configurations. Um, one thing though, um, when mutual TR strict is enabled, you would only have mutual TRS traffic. So you don't uh, need to config filter chain that allows plain traffic in the mesh. So like if you search for um, transport protocol um, in your Envoy configuration, when permissive is uh, applied, you would actually see, you know, raw buffer is allowed. But in this case, like if we do a search, I wonder, I don't think it's going to um, show anything because now we have mutual TLS enable. So next time, if I have permissive, uh, you can run this exercise. Now, another question I want to ask you is, if you only have deploy a few services, why there's so much Envoy configuration for your pod, right? Remember, we just did a proxy config for Web API. I mean, there's like tons, tons, tons of data. I guess I can't even go back um, because my output runs through, right? So it's way much data than you really needed, probably. Um, so to solve that problem is uh, you can use discovery selector to config Istio to say, you know, you only listen to uh, services I want you to care about. You can also config the scope and visibility of your sidecar configuration. So there are two configurations. One is called export to, one is called sidecar. Uh, we're actually teaching you how to use that when you have um, running services in production. So we're going to cover that in, in our Istio Essential Lab. So that's it. I'm going to do a check. Um, this is it for this lab. And I think I'm almost uh, running out of time also. So if you enjoy this lab, I encourage you, you know, finish it up on your own. And if you don't have time today, you know, I would encourage you to check out solo.io. You know, we have a lot of exciting announcement on our website. And uh, we also have a lot of, uh, we're speaking at Service Mesh Con. We have like seven, eight sessions. Um, and we have like a, a Istio workshops. Uh, so if you are interested, you know, just to register to any of our workshop. We're going to go through a lot more detail than this. Uh, what I'm walking through with you is a much shorter version than uh, this uh, certification option is. So that's it. I am going to pause here, see if you guys have any questions. And let me know if you like this session, like this lab, any feedback. I would super appreciate it.
Uh, thank you so much, Lynn. That was that was a great workshop. Um, audience, if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to put them in the chat, or you can also just request to share your audio, and I can just connect you with Lynn directly. So there is one question in the chat. Um, is there a way to run this workshop on our local machines too? Um, the way the workshop is instructed uh, is not really on um, your local, but um, if you really want to run it on local, like if you have an environment, I mean, it still has a lot of documentation. Like it, it teaches you how to do install, it has like a booking for example, you can probably run all those on your workshop. It's just, we provide this environment for you and everything is written optimized for that environment. Okay, that's great. I'm glad a few of you at least enjoy the workshop. Uh, so definitely reach out to me if you have any questions. You know, I'm always on Twitter or LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn so feel free to reach out. All right, thank you so much Lynn, for the workshop and thanks all for attending. Uh, I think there's one more slot for like 4.30. So there's some talks still left for today. So feel free to head over there and watch other talks and and yeah, that's all. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Thanks, everyone. Thanks Bye. for moderating.